anybody looking for a great bicep tricep workout, hand water is where it's at. Here I am hand watering uh, the back nine greens this week. And I hear that's a pretty special honor. I, I would like to think so. I think um, personally we're the ones manipulating the moisture and contributing to the firmness factor and the playability factor. And yeah, it's a, it's a big responsibility. These greens I think are pretty pure. Um, the high to cut is down. They're rolling smooth. When that ball rolls, it's true. There's no bumps, there's no jiggles, there's no nothing like that. It's, these are, these are pretty perfect greens at the moment. This week in the mornings, the hand waters are the last person on the green. It's been mow, roll, set up, and then hand water. Um, in the evenings, it's been a little different. We'll send some hand waters out to syringe, which is just a light, a light dusting, um, and that'll help the greens mowers see their lines, their mow patterns later in the evening. And then it'll be same process: mow, roll. This time, no setup, no cup cutting, and then hand waters are again the last ones on the green. So the syringers, they're not trying to really add any moisture to the green. Um, they're out there to aid in the greens, aid the greens mowers at night. We've lowered our standard as far as putting uh, water on the green. So we're kind of draw, <clears throat> drawing it back as the week goes on, um, making it a little bit more challenging for the ladies, as it should be, headed into Championship Sunday. This is called a TDR. We've also got three inch probes. So when I put it in the green, I'll press the read button. It'll give me a reading. Um, and today we are, I don't know if I, this might be confidential information, I don't know. I won't share it <laughs> today. So today we are um, watering anything below a 14, okay? Which is pretty drastic considering earlier in the week we were starting out watering um, below tw a 23. So definitely got some different things happening. What we typically like to do is we'll definitely go around and hit the perimeters. Most of your water is going to be on the edges just because sometimes the collars, which is the little bit higher height of cut turf here, they'll tend to wick moisture away from the green on the edge. A lot of times too, we'll look for uh, any movement in the green. So ridges, um, mounds, slopes, stuff like that. Usually if you just have a flat surface, that area is going to hold moisture just a little bit longer than those other areas. As I eject mo the moisture meter from the green, we'll also like to just tap it down just so we can um, eliminate any disruption that may have occurred there. It's always a little touch and go after I read the green, I'll water the green and then I'll back check it too just to make sure I got the adequate level necessary. This is a fantastic, fantastic tool, but the turf's always going to tell you what it wants or needs. Stand here and look back this way, kind of right in our shadows. You'll see what sometimes we refer to as leopard spots, cheetah spots, marbling, or even call it what it is, heat stress. Sometimes people don't like to say heat stress just because maybe it's got a little bit negative connotation to it or it might make somebody think things are worse than what it actually is, but that's what happened. And it could have, be, could have happened yesterday, could have happened two days ago, but anytime I approach a green and I see anything like that, I'll make sure to lightly hit it just to help aid in recovery. Even if, um, even if it is at or above the moisture level we're trying to meet, still a little extra push isn't gonna hurt anything. 
um, there were some single digit readings, so that's gonna take a little extra water, and typically what I'll do with that is I'll, I'll water it heavy, and there might be some residual water up on the surface. I'll wait for that to go down, and then I'll come back and hit it again. At this point, I've been on the greens six days in a row now. I almost feel like these are my greens, so it's getting to the point where I can kind of just visually look and tell where it needs water. When it comes to hand watering, the more you do it, the more familiar you get with it, the easier it becomes. 